I'm Erin Parsons. I'm a makeup artist and I own Marilyn Monroe's lipstick. It's true. I'll prove it to you. Now as a makeup artist and a vintage collector, this is the holy grail. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I could own something from Marilyn Monroe, let alone her lipstick. How is it possible to own something that once belonged to Marilyn Monroe 61 years after her death? Before I get into all of this, my search was just to find Marilyn Monroe's products. Like what did she use, which brand, which shade, which color? I would see something come up at auction, for instance, a Revlon Bachelor's Carnation lipstick, and I would search for years to find that same exact product. It took me a long time, but now I own five of them. So basically all I did was just try to find the exact replica of what she used. This way I could piece together how she did her makeup. Because remember Marilyn Monroe, she's a makeup icon. She used beauty, she used lipstick to create a legendary look, something that we all remember her for. We all know her for that platinum blonde hair, the beauty mark, and of course the iconic red lip. How do her items come up for auction all of these years later? So Marilyn Monroe passed in 1962 and she left in her will most of her belongings to her acting coach Lee Strasberg. Lee Strasberg passed away in 1982 and he left everything to his wife Anna Strasberg. These items stayed in storage for 37 years. I don't think anyone even knew that these items existed until 1999. The Christie's auction dubbed Sale of the Century, and this is the first time we see the iconic happy birthday dress. Now this became the most expensive dress ever sold. At that time, it went for $1,267,500. And then in 2016, it went for another record for $4.8 eight million dollars. Now I think we all know by now that this dress went to Ripley's Believe It or Not. What you might not know is they also won her makeup case at that same auction for $266,500. And inside that makeup case, it's the first time that we get to see the makeup products that Marilyn Monroe used. But here's what's strange. So we have the picture and the items that were in the case won by Ripley's. The thing is the list, it doesn't match what we see in the case. So for instance, we see her blush in this makeup case. It's not listed. We see five Elizabeth Arden shadow sticks, but only two or three are listed. So where did all this other makeup go? Then in 2005, this lot sold at Julian's auctions containing 40 of her beauty items. And I recognize that blush. That blush in that lot was the same exact one that they showed in the Christie's makeup kit. So how did we come to have the makeup kit and then a whole nother 40 items of her makeup? Well, she had two houses. She had her apartment in New York City and she had a house in LA when she passed. I personally believe as a makeup obsessed person that she probably would have had a couple of makeup cases or a bag of makeup here and a case there. I'm assuming that those items just stayed with Anna Strasberg in storage until 2005. Here's where the mystery starts for me. In the makeup case sold at the Christie's auction, there are some Max Factor lipsticks and they are labeled LS722 NI. What the heck does that even mean? And now seeing that 40 piece lot come up, are these the same lipsticks? Is it the same exact color? Nothing's listed so far. It just shows that it was 40 pieces were sold. So the lipsticks look exactly the same, but most of all, what is LS722 NI? It looks to me sort of like a lab sticker. Like if someone were working on a cosmetic line, they will send you a lipstick with a sticker on the bottom and that's the lab's label. All these years had passed. I thought it's worth a shot to see if maybe this buyer will sell these products after all these years. Because sometimes when people buy Marilyn Monroe items, they buy them as an investment. It's almost like art. And as you can see from the happy birthday dress, it more than doubles in price. So I reach out to the owner of Julian's auction, Darren Julian, and I say, hey, there is this lot that sold in 2005 for only $9,000. Would this person be willing to sell any of these items? I said, name your price. I didn't know what that meant, but you know, let's see if we can get something out of this. So I say, name your price. I don't hear anything back for a few weeks. And then my friend, Scott Fortner, Marilyn Monroe Collection, who owns a lot of Marilyn's makeup and dresses, and, and he's a total Marilyn encyclopedia. Scott reaches out to me and he says, they need a little bit of help at Julian's auction identifying some makeup products that belong to Marilyn. And this is when they show me what they think is a blue lipstick. But of course, I recognize that from the 1999 case that was sold, 
These are Elizabeth Arden eyeshadow sticks. They show me a few other products. So I help identify a lip gloss, a face slimming mask. Now I'm starting to understand that the person responded to Darren about this 40 piece lot but I didn't know how many items were actually going to be sold in it. And also this is 2022, this is recent. So I know some items are gonna be sold, but how many? Will we see some lipsticks? I have to wait like everyone else until they announce the auction and show the catalog of products. And sure enough, every single piece, all 40 items from this lot are going up for auction. And you have to understand this buyer, again, as an investment, they only paid 9,000. And it's very possible that every single one of these items could sell for 10,000 a piece, give or take. So from 9,000 to possibly 400,000. You did say diamonds, I can tell. But first, this lipstick, this number, still plaguing me. I need to understand what is Max Factor LS722NI. So I get a few clues and it kind of all happens sort of around the same period. It just starts to snowball and I start to learn more and more. And the first clue comes from my friend Scott Fortner again and he told me that one of his friends owned a lip pomade that once belonged to Marilyn Monroe. Now supposedly it was given to his friend from Evelyn Moriarty. Evelyn was Marilyn Monroe's stand-in. You can see her on set on The Misfits. You can see her in Something's Got to Give. And the story is that Marilyn gave this to her. Again, it's her stand-in. She had the blonde hair as you can see. So she gave her this lipstick and said, wear this so we have the same exact shade. So obviously when you're doing the stand-in work, we look similar, we have the same coloring. And when you look at this lip pomade, it says Max Factor on the top, and when you turn it over, 722. Here we are again with this number, 722. What the heck does it mean? But we also get a glimpse of what the lipstick looks inside because so far we just have the picture from the case that sold in 1999 and, and the lipsticks look red. We see the lip pomade open and it looks orange. It looks at least red orange. I don't believe it. And that's kind of what I start to say to myself, like, oh, am I searching for like an orange red, not a typical red lipstick? This picture is starting to lead me down another path, figuring out what the heck this LS722 lipstick is. I'm always buying vintage makeup. So I'm searching eBay, I'm searching Etsy, I'm searching all the, the sites, all the auctions, anything that if a 722 would come up. I don't think there's any way possible again because I'm thinking this is from the lab. It could be the only ones ever created, right? I know Ripley's has her lipstick. I live in New York, but my friend, another gorgeous blonde, Darian Darling, she lives in LA. So I asked her, will you go and check out the makeup case? Because there is one thing that I notice about these lipsticks and it's that they're the Color Fast formula from Max Factor, which I believe launched in 1953 from the ads that I found. Why would Marilyn have lipsticks in her case that were like nine years old? I mean, we're all guilty of using expired makeup, but this is kind of crazy, nine years old. So I say, can you please go check out this lipstick? Get me some close-up pictures. See if there's any other names because you can't see all the bottoms of the lipstick. She goes in and she gets some pictures for me and you can see on the bottom of one of the lipsticks it says Color Fast but the name is sort of smudged off or worn off so I can't see the actual color. So I start to think first theory is Marilyn had a lipstick from 1953 that she loved and she's Marilyn Monroe so she asked Max Factor hey can you make me this exact same lipstick hence the 722 label, put them in the old color fast, the packages, the cases, right? So that's a theory. Then my friend, Darian, tells me that the security guard there is kind of flirting with her and he says, hey, I actually have pictures of the lipstick open, let me show you. This moment blew me away. This is the first time I see her lipstick up close, it's open, and what do I see? I see an orange lipstick. The color is orange, right? Okay, so I have three clues because you know I collect the replicas when I can find them. So now maybe I can't find an LS22 because I've been searching for 10 years and I've never found it. So now what I can look for is a Color Fast, Max Factor Color Fast. See the name, it's kind of smudged out, but it kind of looks like it ends in a D or an E. And if you see the ads, you know, like there was rose red. So now I know what to look for and what not to look for. And over the years, I collected tons of Color Fast Max Factor lipsticks. They have the really old packaging, updated packaging, and it's a very particular look of this case. I found so many of these lipsticks. Not once did I ever come across an orange red not even close to being a warm red. Even a lipstick called Golden Flame, which I thought for sure, and if you look at the name, it's scratched out, it could be Golden Flame, right? 
it should be a warm red. It's not. It's not. If anything, it's more just a, a neutral red. I never come across an orange red. This is where I'm sort of stuck. Would you please give me a hand? I'm sort of stuck. A couple years go by and there's someone on eBay who's kind of obsessed with Marilyn's makeup like I am. So she sees some of my TikToks, my Instagram posts, and she reaches out. This is pretty amazing because she tells me that there's a seller on Etsy who used to be a makeup artist. He's from like the olden days of Hollywood. He actually has a makeup artist kit and this makeup artist, his name was Ben Lane. So Ben Lane was the makeup director of RKO and he also worked on Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand and Annie, he did a bunch of amazing films. So we know this guy, he's the real deal. So he is selling all of these items on Etsy and he has some of the colors that Marilyn used to use. Like again, a bachelor's carnation from Revlon that was sold at auction. So I reach out to him, we become friends because because he's super knowledgeable, he loves the history of makeup, and of course he has all these amazing vintage pieces, so I'm buying a ton of stuff. A couple weeks go by and I get to know him you know, really well, so I finally ask, and I'm kind of scared to ask this question because if anybody knows the relation to M Marilyn, they're gonna hike up the price if they have this object. I didn't think he'd have it. I didn't think I'd ever find this. But I say, do you have a Max Factor LS722 and eye lipstick? I kid you not. He had it, he had the lipstick, and he explained to me what this lipstick was, what this label meant, and here's what he said. What he explained to me was that they would give these lipsticks to the makeup artists to use and test on the movies, television, celebrities, and if the makeup artists gave great feedback and loved it, they would actually put the color in production. So it was sort of like a free marketing to the, the makeup artists. And Ben Lane, he was a director of RKO pictures at that time, and I believe Marilyn even worked on an RKO film, so he probably worked with all of the stars. This makes a bit more sense if they're giving this lipstick to the makeup artist and Marilyn used it and she loved it maybe she said hey can I get like 10 tubes of that I love that color sure here you go very plausible theory so one thing that plagues me about this lipstick is that the color says 722 NIU of course Marilyn's just say NI but what are the chances like 722 NIU like they must be the same thing right well I get the lipstick about a week later and the lipstick color is orange now, if this is not registering as orange on your screen, that's where all of this complication is happening now. Because when he sent me a picture of this, it looked like a red orange to me, but it's pure orange. So again, the mystery deepens. So all this time I've been searching for an orange red lipstick, but should I be searching for an orange? Did Marilyn wear, again, we're, we know she wore red lipstick. We've seen the pictures, right? but you also see how that lipstick just registered on camera. So the question is, did Marilyn Monroe wear orange lipstick? And the answer is yes, she wore it a ton, especially from the mid 1950s until 1962. So then I come across a bit more information. Now at that time, Max Factor Jr. and the legendary artist Dick Smith, all of you special effects artists, you might know who he is, they were working under the Max Factor label. And this was during the time that black and white television was becoming color television. Now, if you know black and white television, when it first started, they did some pretty crazy makeup techniques to make that register as a human flesh. It was quite bizarre, as you can see in the pictures. And in color television, they had the same problems. These colors were not coming up as they appear in person. So finally, I come across a chart from Max Factor. So this is during the time when, of course, the color television was coming in and colors were not showing up properly. So they gave these charts to use certain products. And one of the products for the lips was Max Factor 722. Okay, it's starting to make sense. And the time frame starting to make sense because they talk, this is 1956, 57, 58, when we're seeing like this color television. But if we go back even further, when Technicolor hit in the 1930s, this is when they talk about how a lot of the movies would register how the lipsticks were then. And what they had in the 1930s were indelible lipsticks. So they would stain your lips, this intense fuchsia pink color. And one, that's bad for continuity in the film industry. You don't want something staining your lips if you have to shoot a different scene the next day. So they produced these lipsticks that were unlike what was happening in the 30s. They were just pigments. 
that could easily be wiped off and they were warmer tones, not the, the pink that we saw because of course that would register almost blue. And this can be confirmed because makeup artist Alan Whitey Snyder, who was Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist, had this to say. From one of my all-time favorite books, Marilyn Monroe Metamorphosis, it's like the encyclopedia of Marilyn Monroe and there's some great pictures in here. So in this, you can read everything that Whitey has to say about how he did her makeup. It's very thorough, but it's the end here that's really interesting to me. Lipstick, we used various colors. As the industry changed, we got down to normal colors. At first, we had a hell of a time with CinemaScope. No reds photographed anything but auburn. We had to go light pink. So that just goes to show you, I mean, you had CinemaScope, you had Technicolor, you had Eastman Color, you had black and white television, you also had color television. They had to find a lipstick probably that would look good in all formats. Just to show you, we have this picture, it's from the same exact event. You see her dress, her hair, her lipstick is red, and in the same event, this picture, she's with Betty Grable, and the lipstick is orange. So what color was it? All I'm seeing is orange. Now we know Marilyn wore red lipstick, but did any red lipsticks ever come up for auction? A lot of her lipsticks did come up for auction, but I have never personally seen a pure red color. We have, of course, the Bachelor's Carnation, and that is like a fuchsia pink red. We've got this one from Michael that looks sort of orange, another Elizabeth Arden that's orange, another Elizabeth Arden that is orange. Now this is interesting, this Elizabeth Arden lipstick, it was never opened, it seems the lid was maybe stuck, so we don't know what color that is inside. Could that be the iconic red that we're searching for? This is what we see over and over again. I continue to see the color orange. So far, I've never really seen a red lipstick come up other than this Westmore lip pomade that came up for auction recently. And I just so happen to have a, a lip pomade very similar to the way that that one looked. But what's interesting about this one is it's actually really sheer. So it kind of almost goes on like, like a, a lip balm in a way with a little bit of color. So again, to me, it doesn't give me the iconic red. So going back to my story, when I had talked with Darren at Julian's auction, now I know that there's going to be an auction happening with the 40 piece lot. We know all 40 pieces are coming up. Inside that lot, there are four 722 lipsticks. There was also, of course, the pomade that I just showed you, but I didn't want to go for the pomade only because, well, I really wanted a lipstick. And finally, my dream to understand what this 722 lipstick is was possibly going to become a reality. So knowing that I'm going to spend my life savings, I asked to arrange a private viewing. And I go and I see every single item that is coming up for auction. And the reason I did that is because knowing how much this lipstick could go for well over $20,000, I have no ideas. But what, what I wanted to know was which lipsticks are used, which lipsticks are red. I see that there's a pink lipstick, but it looks like it's sort of been smashed with the cap and it was never actually used. And you don't really see pink. Of course, we hear what Whitey says about the light pink, but you don't really see pink on her as much as you see orange or red. So I dismiss the pink. We also see a couple of what looks like white lipsticks. These are actually highlighters. I would love to have one of these, but again, my goal is the lipstick. We also see the pomade, and I can see up close that there's actual like brush strokes in it. And you can see tons of pictures of Marilyn using a lip brush. So I know this was, this was definitely used by her. So in total, there are five. 722 lipsticks. One of them is sort of a pastel orange. And again, we see the color fast label on the bottom and the 722. Not 722 and I, this one is a little bit of a different color. It's a little softer, it's a little lighter, and it does look to be used. But there's four of the LS722 and I, the lipstick I've been searching for. Now, out of these four, there are only two that are used. I'm determined to get one that's used. Okay, so here's my auction strategy. My idea is that I'm going to bid on the first lipstick, which is used, this is lot 284. If I don't win that, what I'll do is I'll drive up the price. I have a budget of $20,000. I can't go over that. So I will drive up the price and then whoever is bidding on it that's gonna spend that amount of money, maybe they'll go out and I'll, I will also bid on an unused lipstick and hope to get a used one. There's also the last lipstick is used. So I bid on the first lipstick. Now, I'm also thinking maybe people will give up if I go high because they're like, oh, but there's a bunch more lipsticks after. And that's what happened. It went high. It went really high, but this is the one I wanted the most. And I know what everybody wants to know. How much did you pay for it? Because you know I won the lipstick. 
but how much did I pay? Let's roll the clip so you can see. So I won the lipstick in the end. You pay a, a buyer's premium. So in the auction, it was 12,500, but the final price was 15,625. Now this is under my estimate. We, I thought 20,000, cause some of her lipstick did, did go around 18,000, but I won the lipstick I wanted. It was $15,000 and I had a budget and that allowed me to get a few more items. So I actually won her blush, her eyeliner, which she used as her beauty mark pencil, you can see in this picture. And I also won her lip gloss. Also, you see, I've done my research. I bid on the items that I found in pictures. And of course, um, her lipstick and her lashes. And the lashes, that's a great video on its own. Check out my TikTok, see that video. All very, very interesting. I have done my research as you can see. Now, since I found pictures to prove the gloss and the eyeliner, and I found a lot of information on the other products, I wondered, could I prove this lipstick and see it in pictures of Marilyn using it or holding it? Here's a couple of pictures from Bus Stop, and you can see again, it's orange. Now, it was red, her lipstick was red in Bus Stop, but in these pictures, it's orange. If we put up this color fast ad, you can see that the bullet looks exactly like what's in these pictures. And remember, this is the Color Fast Max Factor lipstick. Here she is. This is in 1955 by the photographer Ed Ferengersh, and she has the lipstick on the table. And of course, if you look at the lipstick, at what I have and what was sold, you can see that sort of indentation on the top. So it looks like the exact same lipstick on the table. And here's a picture of her actually using the lipstick. Let me open the lipstick and show you what it looks like inside because it actually looks like it could be this exact same one just judging by the shape or the other one that was sold at auction. And what I haven't stressed to you is that the lipstick is orange. It is pure orange. Again, all this time I was looking for a red orange. It is not red orange. It is pure orange. Now it was my goal to dupe her color. Again, I'm trying to learn exactly what these makeup techniques were and how she created it. And now knowing that she was using an orange lipstick, but I had a secret weapon. I had the tester, which we know is also orange. So I only bought, of course, one lipstick because I can use that 722 tester. I don't have to touch Marilyn's lipstick. I will never touch Marilyn's lipstick. That is pure desecration. It's sacrilegious. Her lipstick will be on display at a museum for charity. She will be preserved forever and her iconic makeup will be preserved. But luckily I had this so I could just swatch this and it's orange, right? It's the same exact color or so I thought. Here's the tester and here's Marilyn's lipstick. You remember I said that you was going to plague me? Well, how do you like that? Well, it certainly did. <laughs> it's not the same color. Oh, it's orange but it's more like a coral orange where Marilyn's is like a pure orange. So there's no way for me to swatch this exact color. 
the only way I could dupe this lipstick is literally just looking at it and setting it next to another lipstick. I mean, in hindsight, had I known that they didn't match, I maybe I would have bought one of the unused lipsticks. I wouldn't feel so bad to maybe swatch a bottom of an unused lipstick, but maybe there will be another auction one day. But until then, I have duped the lipstick just by looking at it. And I've been wearing the dupe this entire time, and it is Revlon Siren. This is the closest I could find just by eyesight. So until one day I can actually swatch a lipstick or some type of technology allows me to get the exact color just from a picture, I'll never know exactly what it is. But this is definitely the closest. So if you want Marilyn's iconic red lip, try an orange lipstick. Now in the end, what was 722? I believe again, it was a lipstick that makeup artists used for, like Max Factor Jr. said, for the Technicolor films to get the right colors on the cinema, the cinemascope, the Eastman color, the Technicolor. So that's why I think she started wearing orange and perhaps she just fell in love with it. Perhaps she liked it with her coloring. The mystery is solved because now I own Max Factor. LS722NI, Marilyn Monroe's orange lipstick. Thank you for watching. If you stuck through this whole thing with me, you're obviously a makeup history buff, just like I am. And you're awesome. I quite agree.